Right, hello, welcome back to another little video tutorial. So, um, quite excited about today's one. It's something that's been bothering me for a very long time. Uh, and a big shout out to Alexander Hill from the Real Time VFX Forum who uh, pointed me in the right direction for the the right nodes to use to do this. So, um, right. So, if your workflow is anything like mine, you'll end up with scenes that look a bit like this. Um, not the amazing VFX, but lots of different things happening. If we look up at the outliner you'll see that actually all these templates, all these particle systems, are all called p-fire. Um, well this isn't a fire, this is some sparks. Obviously all I've done here is I've duplicated things around and then updated the template. Sparks, here we are. Um, which is fine, it's a perfectly good workflow apart from the fact that now all my templates aren't named correctly. So um, it would be really nice if there was a way to do all that, to rename everything. Um, and in fact there is. We can make a little blueprint that does it. So. Here it is, it's just a little actor blueprint. If I click rename, whoop, you'll see now all of these particles have been renamed to be fire, spark, steam, what they are, which is much more useful. So if we just jump back to that test map, if I don't save, um, let's build this uh, as ourselves. So, misc, and I'm going to create a new blueprint. Um, renamer. Let's make sure I get my names correct as well. EP renamer and we're just going to build one. So, um, in. first thing I'm going to do, get all this, I'm going to create a custom event, um, rename. Now, I want this to work in the editor. Um, I want to have that little button. So up here we have this option here, call in editor. Um, you might have heard of blutilities, that's what these used to be called. It just allows us to build a tool, bring one in, you can see that function is there, that event that we've called rename. Um, so it just allows us to build a tool that then we can just press this button and it'll trigger uh, editor time. And you can use construction scripts, you can use all it, well, you can use it to build things. You can't use construction scripts. Um, uh, but it allows you to get access to a lot of that blueprint functionality to build tools within the editor, for example, to rename things. Um, so what do you want to do? Well, um, I'm going to do a little bit of forward thinking here. I'm just going to do a branch. Variable for this, which I'm going to call particles. Because later on I might extend this so that um, I can do things for other entity types. So this is going to all work for particle systems, um, but you might want to do static meshes or skeletal or whatever it is that you have in your in your project, whatever you need the workflow. So uh, I've just promoted a variable for this and I've made it instance editable. So if I compile this now, you'll see it's an option for it here. So I can turn on and off whether I want to. Uh, edit my um, or rename my particles. So if I do, what do I want to do here next? I want to get all actors of class. So this is going to iterate over everything in the scene and just say, are you of this class that I've selected? Now I call them particles or emitters or templates, but in fact these are the actor type is emitter. You can see it here in the outline. So back to this emitter. What that's going to do is it's going to, like I say, just go over every single one of these actors and say, are you an emitter? If so, you go in my array, in my output. If not, I'll just discard you and just ignore you. So now that I've got all my actors, just to show that, what I'm going to do is do a for each node or for each loop. So this out actors here, this is an array. So this is going to be a, a kind of a container that has all of those actors in it. And then for each loop, it just does something to each one. Um, so the array element, that's each actor, the index, the count, so starting at zero. Um, uh, and yeah, and we're just going to go through, and I'm just going to quickly print, so I do this properly, I do this so it knows what's going on, just do a print string, I'm going to print the array element, and you'll see here it automatically creates a display name, get display name node for me. So now I've created a little loop, I click on this guy and rename, you can see it's printed out the names of all those templates. So it's actually taken the name here and then printed that to screen. So it's showing us the thing that's wrong, isn't it? It's showing us the thing that we don't actually want. So, But hopefully you can see that it's kind of like isolated just the emitters, which is the bit we do want. So that bit is working. So it's not the display name we want. What is it? Well, each of these elements, or each of these emitters, has a particle system component. So that is the fact, or is that is this part here, if 
find my mouse. Uh, that's this bit. That's the particle system component. So this is an actor. Inside the actor is a particle system component, and inside the particle system component is a template, and it's actually that template that we want to get access to. So I go here and go get template. I just print the string of that, and again, it's going to give me that display name automatically. So now, hopefully, when I click rename, I'm getting the names of the templates. So I get fire four times, steam twice, and sparks twice, which is what I've got in scene. So now what I need to do is set the outline name here to be the thing here. The uh, the the template name. So we can do that. This is the magic that I was missing. Uh, set actor label. So I don't know how new this is. Uh, this is now 421. Um, I tried to go back and do this in older versions uh, and this node doesn't exist. So I don't know when it came in. Um, it's here now and that's the important thing so if we just do set new label target so not what this is going to do it's going to get each of the elements and it's going to set the name in the outliner or in the world um, to be the name of the template um, and if we just do that click and rename ta-da everything has been renamed by its template so that's pretty useful that's done 90% of what we want. Um, they're not unique names, are they? Fire, 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 fire. It does 90, yeah, just a descriptive bit, um, but they should probably be called fire, fire one, fire two, fire three. Um, I don't think there's any problem with duplicate names in Unreal. Um, I wouldn't be, don't hold me to that, I'm not sure. There might be some problems with this. Obviously if something errors and gives you a, a, a sort of an assert saying like oh something's gone wrong with p fire you don't know which p fire that is so it's not as useful as it could be um, but we can actually fix that that's not it's a bit more complica complicated but um, but we can do it so that's that's fine so let's do that next so um, let's check my notes okay so before we do our renaming let's move this over what I want to do is create a map. So an array, step back a step into the theory, an array is a um, kind of a list, a group of objects and you can have duplicates. Now a map is similar in that it's a single data item that has kind of lots of data within it um, but it has two items of data uh, and so you map one thing to another. Um, sometimes they're called a dictionary uh, and the key features of a map is A, you can't have any duplicate entries so you'll see in a minute if we try and add fire twice it'll just update what that map does um, uh, and we're going to use it basically as a counter so we're going to isolate all the unique elements we've got so in our scene currently we have three unique elements fire, sparks and steam um, and then we're going to have a counter with that that means we can get our, our naming uh, sequence in order so we're going to do just a quick for each loop uh, for our things uh, and again it's the template that I want so we're going to do get particle system component get template and for back to what I'm going to do is I'm just going to promote that to a variable just so I know that I've got the right variable type and you'll see up here particle system I can change this so if we do particle to particle system object reference but by promoting it we get that automatically um, which is really useful because your data type is important in blueprints uh, and we're going to say here we're not going to use an array we're going to use a map and I'm going to call this unique bitters um, so this is now going to be our container our, our list of all the unique emitters in the scene um, and what we're going to do is we're going to check if map contains check whether the, the the map already contains the template and then we're going to do a check branch so if it does if our unique emitters, unique emitters map already contains the template we're going to do nothing because it's already there isn't it we don't need that anymore um, if it doesn't then we're going to do a add going to add template to the map 
Uh, and then the second thing, the second entry in our map, the integer, that wants to be zero because we're going to start counting from zero. Um, so that should be fine. So if I just compile this, turn on the debug, and whoop, run it, should do nothing. You can see it's the output pin going. But you can see, hopefully, if you hover over here, we've got three entries. You can see that all right in the video. Um, P Sparks, P Fire, and P Steam Lit all with those zeros. So what we've done is we've gone through every emitter that lives in the world and said right you're a fire, cool we'll add fire to our unique emitters. Next one, oh you're already a fire, we've got you, we don't need you anymore um, and so on and so forth uh, until you get a map with a unique set of, of emitters or the unique list of all the unique emitters in the thing all with our uh, index of one so or index of zero to start with. So now after we've done our building our unique map we're going to use that in our renaming so what do we want to do here well we've got our template we want to do a find find inside a map emitters get find so now it's going to say right well you're a fire find that in here and we're going to return the the other side of the dictionary so we're going to return that index uh, or, in, or the the integer so in this case the zero so we found that. Um, set the label. What we're going to do is combine these two things together. So we're going to do an append, append two strings. So first the display name, then the integer, which is going to convert to a string for us. Set new label. File. I've done this correct. Rename. Uh, well, <laughs> first step's done. Um, we're getting that index aren't we? We're getting the zero now after all of these things um, so that bit's working but we're not incrementing that index at all so what do you want to do that? So you want to set our label and now overwrite that value so here we've got the it's not give me a thing is it? Still loaded? Yeah so we're getting sparks zero now once we've used sparks zero we want to update it to be sparks one so just take the same map and afterwards and the asset is this template so we're saying fire was fire zero now be fire zero plus one and because this is a loop it'll go through and set fire zero name that and then it'll go in and oh one and then go oh fire two oh fire one is oh, yeah. yeah hopefully you understand hopefully you get the, the number thing so ta -da, fire by zero, one, two, three. If I just duplicate these across, getting loads of them. If I change the templates here to be Steam instead, great. Apart from they're not renamed, click rename. Gosh. Uh, ah, here's another bug. What's happening is they're going up, aren't they? It keeps going up. It's keeping that data. Um, well, hopefully we can fix that. Uh, with something else in a minute. Um, actually, well, let's just fix that quickly. So if we delete that object and start again, rename. Now it's renaming again from from zero. So we need to make sure that we're clearing our data if we're going to keep using this same renamer. Um, but we'll get onto that in a second. So before that, there is a different bug I want to fix. P fire zero. Well, Unreal, despite starting from zero, if I just create another fire actually doesn't name it zero, it names it without anything. Um, if I bring in another one now, that one will name correctly sequentially, but if we use our renaming script and then create a new object, it creates it kind of at the first of the list instead of at the end of the list. So what we need is a special case. Well, that's quite easy to do. So in our bit here, where we're doing our renaming, we just want to do a quick select. So if I say integer what we want to say if the integer we've got is exactly zero i.e. it's the first one on the list I want to do a select string select string so we want to select from two different strings depending on what the uh, whether if it's the first one if it's integer zero um, if it is the string we want is nothing isn't it because p fire no number is the first object or entry in that list um, and now if it's not zero, if it's one or 
anything not zero. Um, now we're going to give you just pass that string through. So that should fix that problem. So let's rename these again. I might need to. Nope, it's fine. Um, yeah, so now it's renamed it to p five zero. And if I create a new fire, it's creating it nine at the end. So that's almost it. We're getting there. Um, one thing that you will notice: if I try and delete an object that's been renamed, it tells me that it's referenced by the object um, renamer. Now that's fine. You can just delete this, but it's a bit of an annoying thing to have this warning every time. If we just delete this actor, now it's fine. There we are. Um, and so the workflow for this is probably going to be find my blueprint again. Prince Misk Renamer. You're going to bring it in, you're going to rename, everything's done, and then you can delete it again. Um, well, that's great, but why not? That's going to be our workflow. Do that for us. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a sequence, and then after I've done my thing for particles, and you could du duplicate this um, and do it for static meshes, um, you have a look at the one that I've done already. There we are, I've got particles. I've got static meshes. You need to change the variable types uh, and a little bit of slight differences. So, in, in the way an emitter has a s particle system component and a template, a static mesh actor has a static mesh component and a static mesh. So, um, hopefully, that's the same, follows through, same logic, but you can see it really is just a copy paste between the two things. Um, but we've got this bit down here that we're going to add, which is a self destruct. So, I've added the option here. If we want, and then have a branch remote variable. So I think I called it auto cleanup before. Self destruct sounds cooler. Um, if self destruct is two, just destroy destroy actor, um, and that will just destroy itself. So give them the option. You don't always want to use this, probably or potentially, but oh, made self destruct editable is. So now, self-destruct is true. When I rename, pop, it also deletes the actor. So you can see here, my gizmo is still there, but there's nothing selected. He doesn't exist anymore. So now, everything's been renamed nicely, and that referencing is gone. So if I delete these, that's fine. Um, they're not being referenced by that actor anymore. And that bug we had about reusing the same thing and renumbering has gone as well, because this is obviously and be a brand new actor every time so you could fix this it's quite easy to do just have a clear and reference first it is clear and now uh, that have to be the end of this loop and, okay so once we finish with our second loop once we've done all our renaming we're just going to clear off those emitters that might in fact fix our referencing as well so if I just rename, back to zero, rename, rename, rename. So it's a very quick, simple fix. If I delete this, now it's still saying they're referenced, um, which they shouldn't be because the emitters or the the map is gone. So not quite sure exactly how Unreal is dealing with that, but to be honest, we probably don't want this renaming actor floating around. Um, there's probably better ways to do this, but I quite like using blue utilities and and blueprints that have things. They're easy to find. You can put them sort of in a nice part of your world where you have keep all your kind of utility things together and if you just have it self-destruct you never get that issue either so yeah that's a really really helpful thing hopefully um, I'm gonna go back to all my old scenes and rename everything uh, I hope that is helpful for you um, I'm actually gonna stick this up on Gumroad so if you follow the link you can get a copy uh, it is 421 only I'm afraid so if you're working on an older project either you'll have to well, like I say, the actor set actor label node didn't exist in 16 or 18 when I tried them, so um, it might be okay in 1920. Like I say, didn't try that. But uh, if you're 421 or newer, then grab a copy or build your own, um, and hopefully, yeah, that will be helpful. Um, a little insight into how Blue Utilities works and maps and arrays and all that stuff. Uh, as always, questions, comments, and things, uh, email me, um, and yeah, and I'll see you all next time.